Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I say to you, Merry, Merry, and very Merry Christmas. To God be the glory, to Him alone who made heaven and earth, the angels, the visible and the invisible, who sent us heaven's love wrapped in human skin. To Him alone be glory and honor and praise and power. What a wonderful Father. What a glorious God. What a mighty giver that gives, that gives, that gives. Hallelujah. And what a time also that you and I can lift up our eyes unto heaven and appreciate and thank Him who alone is the Almighty, who gives us every good thing to enjoy. The physical world, full of His glorious grace. The stars and the moon, the ocean and the rocks, the mountains and the hills. The gift of people, the birds and animals. The whole earth is full of His goodness. What an abundant giver. Our God is a lavish giver. He is love, and love can't just hold back. He can't just hold back nothing. He gives us all good things to enjoy. Blessed be his holy name. And again, I say to you, Merry Christmas 2022. To God be the glory. As we celebrate this year, it's Christmas. We are celebrating in a very strange time. And, um, and uh, with so much happening in the world, so much wars and pain and chaos and natural disasters and fears and refugees on the move and people operate from their homes by, by earthquakes and floodings. And some people may think, should we really celebrate at all? Can we be even show some joy or happiness in the midst of all this turmoil and chaos and wickedness and darkness? What is purpose for rejoicing and celebrating? Well, I can tell you, if you understand the message of Christmas, if you understand the message of Christmas, if you know who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, if you know this baby has wrapped in a manger, if you know who it is, who he really is, and what he means to you and to the world. And what he has done for that suffering child, that suffering mother, that one that is crying, that lonely, that pain, that one in prison, that one is ostracized. If you know who is Jesus Christ, who is this baby wrapped in, 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 in the manger there. If you know his love, his mercy, his kindness, his steadfast love and presence. I'm telling you, you will always have a reason to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything. Even though it doesn't look good outside, even though I don't feel much reason to really celebrate or be happy or be joyful or be optimistic about life. If you know the love of heaven, if you know how much you are loved, how much everyone is loved. How much love is in the Father's heart for every child. For even the one that is suffering. If you know the love of God. And what lies ahead for those who has come to fall in love with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You will have every reason to be happy and joyful and celebrate. We are not celebrating a season or a time. We're not celebrating the material gifts. We are celebrating a person. We are celebrating Jesus Christ. We are celebrating the love of heaven that is sent down here on earth, wrapped in human skin. Agape, the love of Jehovah. Heaven's love, heaven's king, wrapped in the human skin. The gift of the Father, the gift of eternity, the perfect gift from a perfect God who knows our perfect needs. Oh, if you understand the gift of God and who it is that is wrapped in human skin, born in the manger, you will know that there's every reason for you and I 
to be hopeful, to be joyful, to look up and thank God because salvation is here. Redemption is here. Christ has come. Our arch enemy, Satan, and all his powers has been humbled, has been broken in pieces. When you know, when you've tested the love of Christ, who he is, who is this baby wrapped in the manger? Is the love of heaven wrapped in human skin? The Bible said that every good gift, every perfect gift comes down from above and descends from the Father of light, with whom is no variableness, no shadow of turning. The, the love of the Father does not discriminate. None of us is qualified. It's okay, you are qualified for it, you are not qualified. No, 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 no. He gives to all. The love, the perfect gift of God is His Son, Jesus Christ. And it's given to all, to those in pain. If you are in pain today, Christ has come to bring you relief. If you are bound today, he has come to bring you deliverance. If you are hopeless, he has brought, come to bring you hope. If you have no peace, he is the prince of peace. If you have no joy, he has come to bring you the joy unspeakable and full of glory. If you are in the darkness, he is your light. He's come to illumine your heart and mind and brighten your life. And restore your dignity and your self-respect. Blessed be the king of eternity who came down here on earth and was born in the manger. Heaven's love wrapped in human skin. At last, love of heaven has come to conquer the devil's hatred of humanity. To the extent God loves you, is the extent Satan hates you. To the extent God can use people to bless you, the same way Satan uses people to hurt you. Choose love. Choose Christ. Choose God's love. That love conquers hatred and wickedness and evil and darkness. The love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, breaks the backbone of Satan and his evil forces and brings us into the limelight of divine affection, compassion, and mercy. Praise be to God. And so, my friends, if you know who he is that is born in the manger, you will have every reason to celebrate. And celebrate him. We celebrate Christ, the love of God. And here in the book of Luke chapter 2, we read the story. And it says, and it came to pass in those days, that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. This taxing was first made when Cyrus was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his expert wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in a swaddling cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And I pray also at this Christmas season that you might make room for Jesus Christ in your heart. There was no room for them in the inn. The king of heaven came, and he must have no place for him. The love of heaven came, and he must have no place for him in their hearts, in their mind, in their thinking, in their consciousness. There was no space for him. I pray that you, in this Christmas season, will make room for Christ Jesus in your heart. Will you say, Oh Lord Jesus Christ, Lord of heaven and earth, the love of heaven. Please come into my heart. Be my Lord, be my Savior. Come teach me how to love like you loved. Fill my heart, flood my heart with divine love. Give me grace to forgive my enemies, to bless those who curse me. Love of heaven, fill my heart. And here the Bible says, 
He brought forth his and led him in the manger because there was no room for them in the inn. I pray that you make room. Say, Lord, here is my heart. I make room for you in my heart, in my home, in our dinner table. Some have this whole celebration of Christmas that they don't even pray. They don't even say, oh, God, thank you for keeping us alive to see another Christmas. They don't even pray. They think they are so smart, they are so intelligent. That's why they have all this. They celebrate gifts. They celebrate themselves. They don't celebrate Christ, the gift of heaven. I believe you are not you are not that you know funny not to thank God for this season, for Jesus Christ is the reason for the season. And so the, he was led in the manger. And then the Bible said in verse 8, and there we are in the same country, shepherds are dying in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born in this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And there, suddenly there was with the angel, mother of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill towards men. Hallelujah. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them to the heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go in even unto the Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord had made known unto us. Us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph in the bed lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told of them concerning this child. Praise be to God. Who is this baby wrapped in, in the manger? It is Christ the Lord. It is no common child. It, he is the Christ, the anointed one. He opened up heaven and came down to earth. That's why heaven's angels had to escort him to come down here on earth. They sounded the trumpet and sang praise unto his name. Because the king of heaven has come down here to tabernacle with us human. In this little baby, in this little child, this Christ the king is the hope of the human race. He's the light of humanity. He's the hope of humanity. He's heaven's love wrapped in human skin. Our rising and our falling depends on who we think this child was and is. And what he has done and accomplished for every single human being on the face of the earth. What a pain, what a shock to, to, to heaven's angels that 2,000 years where Christ has already come to earth and died on the cross, risen from the dead, and destroyed Satan, that humans are still worshipping the devil, that humans still worship themselves. They still bow to a fallen angel. What a shame. What a pain to, to the angels of heaven who came down to introduce to them and say, this is the Christ. This is the savior of the human race. Put your hope in him. Trust him for salvation. Jesus Christ, the hope of the human race. Is Christ the king. Is the prophesied Messiah. Is the seed of the woman that was spoken by God that will come to this earth and crush the head of the serpent. This is the hope of Adam and Eve when they saw that they, they have lost everything to a fallen angel who deceived them. And God came to that Garden of Eden that very day, that fateful day in the Garden of Eden. And Adam and the wife are eating the forbidden fruit and they were naked. They have lost everything inside and out. They were now broken and bankrupt and plundered. The thief, the devil, has stolen from them their glory and their dignity. And their future was in doubt. And God stepped in there, chapter 3 of Genesis, and spoke to them and said, The seed of the woman, the seed, a child will be born with no man's help. It will be total union between heaven and the woman. And that child will be the Christ. He will come to crush the head of the serpent, the root of every pain on earth. Every sorrow, every, every war, every anxiety. When will the humans arise and say enough is enough? Let's go back to our God. Let's return to Jesus Christ. Let, read, let him read us of, of the devil and his evil. 
how long will humans arise and put their hope and confidence in the only one that loves them and cares for them and believe in Jesus Christ and be saved and he and enjoy heaven forever this is he who was prophesied by the prophets. This is he that God told Adam and Eve that the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. And it says there in chapter 3 of the book of Genesis. Hallelujah. And it says in here in verse, um, in verse 15, uh, the Lord said to the to the, in fact, verse 14 said, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. Now the devil here was in, 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 you know, impersonating the serpent. And so the Lord was speaking through the serpent to the devil. And he says, Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thou shalt be thou eat all the days of thy life. And then verse 15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and shall bruise your head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And you can see how devil and his gang is working hard on earth to make the, the footprints of God's people today on earth very painful, a painful one. To hurt the footsteps of those who serve God. But God, thank God that his word said that the, 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 the seed of the woman, the Christ, will crush the head of the serpent, will destroy the head of Satan, will break his authority, his power, his right of influence and rule on earth. And Christ came and through his death on Calvary, the Bible says, through death he destroyed him that had the power of death. That is the devil. You don't have to fear the devil. Christ has destroyed him already. That's why he came. Heaven's love wrapped in human skin, born in the manger, to come and crush the head of the devil and free you and I, who through our lifetime, we are subject to bondage, who through fear of death, through fear of the devil, through fear of the future, through fear of everything, we are subjected to satanic bondage. And thank God that God sent his only begotten son to come and crush the head of the serpent and free those who believe in him. To God be the glory. This is he who was prophesied by the prophets of old. If you remember then Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14, and the, Bible, the Lord said here, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. A virgin conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means what? God with us. God has come in the likeness of man. This is the Christ. This is the Messiah. This is he who has been prophesied by the prophets, that the Son of God will come here on earth and will read us human of the satanic onslaught and wickedness. Today, people serve the devil. They show, demonstrate their power. What power they got? Power for what? Power to kill. Power to steal and cheat and do evil. And the doom of hell waiting for them. Today, if you've not given your life to Jesus Christ, there's no better time to give your life to Christ than this season of Christmas, where you are hearing of heaven's love wrapped in human skin, coming to save you and I from the power of the enemy, from the power of our own sins and mistakes and fallings. Cry out to this, say, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart, O oh love of heaven. Come and be my Lord and my Savior. Let, let me not just celebrate Christmas by feeding my flesh, but we're having things like, let me just, let, let, let that Christ come into my heart and be my righteousness and be my peace and be my joy. The food and the drink and the gift can last for a day or two. But Christ in your heart will endure for all time and eternity and give you hope of heaven's blessedness. Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. Chapter 9 of the book of Isaiah, and he says here in verse 6, he said, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called what? Wonderful. Counselor. The mighty God. The everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God incarnate, God with us. His name shall be called Wonderful, 
counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. God coming in human skin to redeem humanity from the power of sin and evil and death and doom. Blessed be his holy name. What a gift, the gift of Christ, the gift of salvation, the gift of hope, the gift of the light of that gift is yours today. You don't have to grow up again in the darkness of religion and just following your own fable imaginations and reason. Where did your brain, where did your head come from? In the pollutions and the delusions of this present world and humans who are trying to make a merchandise of everything they can find to make themselves great. If it doesn't matter if they use the devil and satanic means to get it. But you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Unto us a child, a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. This is the Son of God, this is God wrapped in human skin, coming to redeem you and I. This baby in the manger is no common person. He is the savior of mankind. This is, he was prophesied by the prophet Micah. And look what he says. And, 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 and he says in verse two, Micah chapter five, but thou Bethlehem Ephrata, do thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall be, shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. The Christ is from everlasting. He was prophesied hundreds and hundreds of years before the baby was born in the manger. It, this is he whose origin is from eternity, from everlasting to everlasting. He is the savior of mankind. He is no ordinary person. He is the hope of humanity. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. And then you remember then when the time was come, as, as God sent the angel to, to Mary. And, and you remember there in the book of Luke, in the book of Matthew, and, and, and the angel came to Mary and then and began to talk to her. And look what happened there in, in, in the book of Luke chapter 1. And it says... Um, in chapter one of Luke, and and then just came came unto, into Mary, and that, the Lord said unto me with this, and then the angel came to Mary, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a woman whose name was Mary, whose mother's name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. That's verse 20, 37 now. And the angel said unto, in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. And blessed art thou among women. When she saw him, she was troubled and at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salvation this should be. Then they said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And I pray for you today, as you celebrate this Christmas season, that you find special favor with the Almighty God. That's what Christmas is all about. It is you finding favor with God Almighty. The favor that will bring you eternal salvation. Bring you forgiveness of your sins. A change of heart. A change of mind. A change of direction. A victory over your enemy. You have found favor with God. I say to you today, you have found favor with the Almighty God. Hallelujah. And, uh, and it says, and when she saw him, she was troubled. In his, and he's his saying and cast in her mind, what manner of salutation sh this should be. Then she said unto her, fear not Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he, and he shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. They said, Mary, unto the angel, how shall this be seen? I know not a man. The angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be conceived of thee, shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. Mary, man has no part to play in this. It is, it is God Almighty. 
John chapter 1 said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Who is that? Jesus Christ. He is the Word of God, the incarnate Word. The Bible says, and the Word became human. The Word became incarnate in the womb of Mary. As Mary received the Word of the angel and believed, the power of God came upon her, that Word became a seed in her womb. The same way now as I'm speaking to you, if you believe in Jesus Christ today, by believing this Word I'm saying to you, this very Word, the Holy Ghost will use it to create a new life in your innermost being. The life comes into your heart as many conceived Christ. So you can, the Holy Ghost today can use this word today to bring you new life, a new heart, a new life, a new beginning. Christ can come into your heart now, become your Lord and your Savior. One more time again, say, Lord Jesus Christ, I give you my heart. I give you my life. Forgive my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord that today I have found favor with the Almighty God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And again, I say to you, Merry, Merry, wonderful, and the best of Christmas. And may the Lord Almighty open to you this season of the year his wonderful treasure and give you joy and fill you with hope for the future because Christ has come. His light has shone around you. You will never again walk alone. You will never again walk in the darkness. Merry Christmas. From Oasis Church right here in Prado. This is Pastor Fessel saying to you, arise and shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Go ahead, get the info on the screen and write to us and tell us how the Lord has been using this through this year to minister to you, to bless you in any way in everywhere. To God be the glory. We just we thank God for a, a marvelous work God has done this year, that he has kept us still on the air, even in such a time as this, all through the year. We have never stopped broadcasting the word. It's now going to many parts of the world, bearing, bearing great and amazing fruits. Please today, try right call today. Let's know what God has done in your life this year. God bless you and see you again very soon. Praise be to God. In Jesus' name, amen.